All right, well, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the digital to analog converter. And in the next three lectures, build up the technology we're going to need to create sound. So our end point is to play music. And uh, some of the building blocks we're going to need uh, is the first one we're going to need is the digital to analog converters, converter. Okay, so uh, we're going to uh, talk about the Nyquist theorem. We're going to talk about that digital to analog conversion. Uh, this is in uh, section uh, 8.4 in the book. Uh, there are a couple of uh, awesome web pages uh, that are interactive. And um, uh, this first fundamental concept, this is one of those things right here, right now, is going to be important 10 years from now. And in, in essence of what we're going to do here in Lab 5 is we have music or sound, which is a, a, a time varying pressure. And that pressure uh, wave propagates through the air and our ears can hear it. And our minds will love to, to, to listen to it. And so, but we want to be able to represent that time varying pressure uh, with a sequence of digital numbers. And it turns out that there are some fundamental limitations or fundamental theories associated with this digitizing uh, of that analog waveform. And as you can see from the picture, and as you would have seen from that, uh, go ahead and look, go ahead and click through that uh, website there, uh, there are some two major decisions uh, that one has to make when one digitizes. The first, is the number of discrete values in voltage. Okay? And when we saw this in 319K, we gave a name to the number of values that a, uh, that a uh, digital or an analog uh, uh, signal can be. What's the name for the number of values? And we had another name that was the difference, the smallest difference uh, between voltages. This one is the resolution. And this one is the precision. Okay. And uh, the precision is the number of different values that it could have. Okay. And we could be in binary bits or decimal digits or just in this case 8 or 16, whatever that is. Okay. And as I add more, as I add more points here, for instance, if I were to, 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 to double the precision, I would be doing what to the resolution? If I double the precision, I'm having the resolution. So there's a relationship between these two. Okay? So we need, there's actually one more parameter here that's significant, okay, in this picture. One more sort of limitation, some, some sort of a, a wall beyond which I cannot uh, go above or bo go below. You see that? I got the maximum value and I got the minimum value, okay, which defines a range okay, in voltage. And so now, now I can put the two pieces together, and that is the range is equal to the precision in, in, in alternatives, which is equal to two times the number of bits, the precision times the resolution. Uh, in our case, it's going to be a 12-bit converter, so we're going to have a 4,096 alternatives. That'll be 12 bits. Our range is going to be, say, from 0 to 3 volts, and so that will give us a resolution somewhere less than a millivolt. Okay. Okay, that'll be. But there's one more uh, dimension to this picture. So we're going to digitize it, but we have to also quantify what other parameter. What other parameter is going to be digital? To represent music or sound, if, if voltage is correlated, analogous to pressure, uh, 
and we want to generate sound, what else do I, what else do I have to know? I need to, I to know the frequency or the sampling time, and so I'm going to digitize time as well. Okay. Okay. And so I'm going to have a, a time difference here, which will be the sampling period. Okay. And the, uh, the relationship between this time, this time has a fundamental uh, consequence, and that is the Nyquist theorem. Okay? And so if my sampling interval is delta t, that means my sampling frequency was fs, which means that I can represent 0 to 1 half fs. Okay? That's the Nyquist theorem. But there's also something analogous to the precision as well. So if you think about sound, what else do you, you know, if you think about music, uh, again, we can redraw the axis in this dimension. I'm going to digitize time so that this time difference is delta t. Uh, there's also a limitation, okay, analogous to the precision. There'll be the number of points here. There'll be the number, there'll be a finite number of points, which means there is a, a minimum time and a maximum time. And therefore there will be a time difference. Okay. And this limitation, the fact that I've decided to have a finite number of, of elements, is actually going to generate what's called a frequency resolution. Okay. which is, uh, get this right, John, F over N, okay. in a way that is uh, very similar to the way in which we had the maximum voltage and the minimum voltage. And if you want to see the proof of this, uh, go ahead and look up where you've learned the discrete Fourier transform. Okay. And we're not going to do the discrete Fourier transform in this particular class. Uh, but we are going to talk about the limitation that one has with the number of points in your waveforms. Okay? And it turns out in order to make this pretty, I need both a lot, of, a lot of bits in my A to D converter and a lot of time parameters in that dimension. Okay? So we are bound by the walls of voltage in this dimension and time in that dimension. Okay? And we're going to digitize both. That's the essence, the most important thing that's going to happen here in Lab 5. Uh, so now I want to show you how it works. Uh, again, there was another awesome uh, interactive. This is a, a JavaScript that doesn't scale well. So you're going to have to play with this. Uh, but the, in essence, to say what we want to do is make the, um, what we want to do is make the, um, see, I told you it doesn't scale well. We want to make the uh, blue line which is the true. We want to represent the blue line, which is true, with the red line. And what I can control is the number of, let me move this down here, and let's, uh, let's try to move the number of, of bits higher and higher. Okay? And you notice that I, I, I maximize the number of bits, but my blue, my red still doesn't represent the blue. Okay? Because what I got to do, yes? Question? Yeah. Um, you said that there has to be a limitation on the time. Yeah. But what would happen if you just output samples as long as your program is running? Okay. Yeah. Turns out that you're, he said, uh, if I output my, uh, my sound for a year, a month, 10 years, what are the consequences? It turns out you're going to have a very, a lots of very low frequency responses. So uh, you're not going to be able to, if you look at that equation, Okay, I want to go back to W. He, he said, what happens if I, if I increase the time? W, right? And if you look at delta F, right? so if I'm sampling at 22 kilohertz, and this thing becomes very large, okay, I'm going to have a lots of low frequency response. Frequencies on the order of one, one month, one over a month, one over a year. 
basically I'm going to be able to change my, my music once a minute and I'll be able to tell. It doesn't help your high frequency response, but it'll help your low frequency response. That's the consequence of having a very long set of points. But if I'm trying to output a waveform, and this thing that I just showed you here, let's go back to this. If, I, uh, if I'm trying to output this waveform, I can make this a lot better by outputting more points. You can see I completely covered the, uh, the blue line with the red line. And so I don't want to go longer in time, I want to go faster. Okay, so I can get better high frequency response. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. And let's look at the second one while it's up before it crashes. Uh, this is a 1-bit um, DAC. Okay. There's a 1-bit DAC. Uh, it's not very good. Okay. So let's make it 2 bits. Okay. Uh, now it's a 2-bit DAC. Again, what we have on the x-axis is the digital values, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And on the y-axis is uh, the corresponding values, assuming it goes up to 3.3. And then we go uh, 4 bits, gets better, uh, 5, 6 bits, 8 bits, 10 bits. Okay? Uh, and this shows you the relationship between the digital value, the number of the precision, and the number of values. Uh, in, in, um, on the test, which actually will be the second exam, uh, we're going to do three. Uh, I'm going to show you lots of DAC solutions, but I'm gonna sh you're going to be responsible for three of them. Uh, the first is the binary weighted one, which is the one you did in 319K. And in the binary weighted DAC, uh, we use resistor values that are weighted by uh, a value, uh, by twice as much as the other ones. Uh, this is in the book 8.4. Okay. Um, the second one I want to do is an R2R ladder. Okay, so let me show you that one. In an R2R ladder, uh, it works this way. All the resistors are either R or 2R. This is going to be a 3-bit R2R ladder. And the output is going to be this current. Okay, so the output is going to be a current. Uh, it's going to be a current. Right? And the inputs, this is going to be ground. Okay? And the inputs are going to be my, uh, my input voltage. Let's make this 3.3 uh, volts. That'll make it easier. or zero. Okay. So each of these bits and uh, uh, divides by two, so bit zero is here, bit one, bit two. Okay. So the bits are, are, are binary related. In other words, each one is worth twice as much as the previous one. And uh, let's look at the, uh, the basis elements. If I put 3.3 volts here and I put 0 volts there, 0 volts there, 2K, 2K, 1K, 1K, 2K, 2K, 2K ground, all right? This is the basis element 0, 0, 1, okay? And now let's use Ohm's law. What's 2K in parallel with 2K? 1K. What's 1K in series with 1K? What's 2K in parallel with 2K? 1K. What's 1K in series with 1K? 2K. And now I have enough to do the current divider. If current were, well, let's go all the way down and find out how much current it is. Okay, so what's 2K in parallel with 2K? 1K. So I have 3.3 volts, 3K to ground. Okay, so my current is 1.1 milliamp. Right, with me there? All right, now this current's going to divide. Which way is it going to go? Left or right? 1.1 1, 1 .1 milliamp is going right here. Where's it going to go, left or right? 
Both. How much is going to go left? How much is going to go right? Half. Remember? 2K on the left, 2K on the right. Remember that? 2K over there, 2K. So it's going to divide in half. Okay? The current will divide in half. Whatever that current is, it divides in half. And now it's going to come up to this node. This is not an open. That's a ground. Okay? So which way is it going to go? Both. How much is going to go which way? It's going to go half. Now, that way is the interesting one. I still got a quarter, but whatever, 1.1 divided by 4. And it's going to come up here, and then what happens? Divides one more time, 1 eighth. And it doesn't matter whether you have 3 bits or 12 bits. Every stage, it divides in half. Okay? When it gets to the end, my response to 0, 0, 001 is going to be 1.1 milliamp over 8. Okay? Now, it turns out, if I put it in the middle, it still gets me 3K to ground because it's completely symmetric, but it only divides in half twice. So I'm going to get 1.1 milliamps over, over 4. And 100, zero, zero, the current comes here. Again, it's going to see 3, 3K to ground, but it only divide once. So the exponential relationship here is a function of the position. The, more way, the further away from the output, the more times it divides by 1 half. And that's my response to this R to R ladder. Okay. A very, very common uh, and effective way to build an R to R ladder, uh, to build a DAC. Uh, hmm. Let's do one more. This is the way the, um, the, the TLV 5616 works. And that is, it turns out as the world gets more complicated, what they solve the problem is with more transistors. And so if transistors were completely free, uh, if circuits were completely free, you'd have a lot of them and more and more of them. And so the way this is going to work is in your 12-bit converter, it's going to put down 4,096 resistors of all the same value. This is only a 3-bit DAC, so it only has 8. Okay. So it's going to take the number of bits and, and multiply and exponentially uh, relate that 2 to the n, and that's how many resistors of equal value that I'm going to have. Okay. So I'm going to take all the points uh, that I want to output and create a voltage for them all, all at once with 4,096 resistors. And now the digital value just selects which one you want to put out. Which of those 4,096 is the one you want? And so what it does is it takes the most significant bit and decides whether it's the top half or the bottom half. And then it takes the middle bit and decides within the top or bottom half, which one should it do. And then one by one by one, uh, it, will, um, it will, OK, it's the other way around. Those bits are reversed. Uh, the most significant bit is on the right over there. This is the most significant bit which ch chooses whether or not it's the top half or the bottom half. And then if it is the top half, the next bit decides whether it's this one or this one. And then uh, in this particular case, that one's the one connected. All right. That's the output when it's 1, 1, 1. Uh, it has the advantage of being really, really fast. Okay. Uh, on our device, uh, we're going to put in a 1.5 volt reference. We're going to put in a 1.5 volt reference, which means our output is going to be a value from 0 to 3 volts. Okay, and that's called uh, a string, a resistor string. All right, so we saw what the, the most important part about today was the sampling theorem. Uh, and the second is we saw three different ways to make a DAC. We saw the binary weighted which had resistors which were twice as big of each other. We saw the R2R ladder, which implemented the exponential relationship by where it was and the divide by 2. And we saw the string, which implemented the exponential relationships by spending an exponentially large number of resistors and transistors in this circuit. All right. Uh, so next time, we'll uh, talk about some more performance measures associated with the DAC. All right. We'll see you on uh, Wednesday.